<laughs> Hello, everyone. My name is Vox. Some good news here. Uh, yesterday, I got a firmware update for this review unit that I got from Asus on this Asus ROG Ally. I went from a BIOS update from April 15th to April 27th. As a result, when I did a simple test on Batman Arkham Knight, effectively I'm getting 12% better performance than I was on my April 15th BIOS. So that is already painting a good picture that we're in a right direction here. So I just wanted to uh, preface this with that particular bit of information before we start going into the real purpose of this video, which is a deep dive into 10 watt uh, numbers. So instead of showing you a bunch of numbers and going horizontally and showing you a bunch of things, instead what we're going to do is we're going to go vertically into one slice. So what I'm going to start off with first is we're going to look at Batman Arkham Knight on my GB2MX2 7840U and the Asus ROG Ally. I'm going to show you that in real time. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to try to split screen this so you can see it at the same time. But effectively, what I want to show you is that here are the settings that I'm using. Everything's on high. NVIDIA Gameworks is off. And we're going to go ahead into the performance test of this. And I hope that you can take a look at the CPU package power itself on both those platforms. The important bit that I want you to kind of really pay attention to here is take a look at, I think it might be charge rate on the Asus ROG Ally. I didn't rename it to total system power. And it's going to be total system power on the GPU Max 2, potentially. And if you take a look at those, what you should gather is how little power the Asus ROG Ally is actually using totally from the battery. So the, the charge rate that you're seeing is actually the BMC data from the system itself being reported to Hardware Info and Hardware Info was presenting it to you. When we take a look at this data, the Asus ROG Ally is at 100% battery. So this number that you're seeing is a little bit lower than what it would actually be. In reality, it's probably closer to 16 or 17 watt in total system power when we were to think about it in terms of calculating based on the capacity of the battery being a 40 watt hour battery to kind of understand what kind of battery life we'd be getting at in this particular instance. But overall, the Asus RG Ally is doing exceedingly well on using very little power. This is really impressive to see and something that I don't think people should dismiss uh, because it's actually very impressive. The other bit that I want to show you here is the averages from these machines. So if we take a look at the new April 27th BIOS that I have, these numbers that you're seeing on Batman are lining up with what I captured on Cap Frame X. We're getting around 32 uh, frames a second on average and around 22 on one percentile. So this all lines up. And likewise, on my GPU Max 2, we're looking at a 44 average, even though I have like 46 on the Cap Frame X. So basically a 5% difference, which is margin of error for just a one-off test. And then we take a look at our minimums and they line up with Cap Frame X as well. So what you just saw was those platforms running in real time, showing the data that I showed you already. So this is just to confirm to you that what you're seeing is actually reality and objective measurements. Now we're going to go into why this is happening. So we're going to go into a deep dive on this particular scene at a 10 watt TDP slice and try to understand what's going on. So up first, we're going to be taking a look at CPU side. All right, I very quickly want to just show you the package power of graphed out on a sheet like this, just so you can see it in the slide. The Z1E's power is 10 watt across the board. It's a little bit noisier than the 7840U, and that's fine and well. I mean, we're basically using 10 watt TDP, but just to show you on a graph of what that actually looks like. The more important bit that I want to show you, and this is kind of the crux of where the, the secret sauce of what the 7840U is doing, if we take a look at the core voltage that is averaged across all eight cores on both of the platforms, if we just take a look at this line, what you're going to see is that the 7840U is using just a, a microscopic amount less voltage than the Z1E is. It's, it's using just a tiny bit less voltage. It is effectively very, very slightly undervolted. And as a result, if we kind of just zoom into this graph and we just keep on following it along, we're going to see an area where Eventually, we're going to see the 7840U spike its, its voltage. And this is interesting. There's, there's a little bit more to unpack here because we're in a zone where we're thinking, oh, we're using less voltage than the Z1E. But now all of a sudden, we're bursting like crazy above it for a period of time. And in fact, when we go further down the voltage line, we can see that it is consistently overvolting what it is on the Z1E. Now, we're going to talk more about this in a second, but the end result here is that if we take a look at L3 cache clocks, when you see that the boost in voltage happens, we see the L3 cache clock boost clocks. If we take a look at IF clocks, right at the same line, we're gonna see IF clocks hitting a more stable clock rate. If we take a look at the averages on the CPU clocks themselves, 
that is where we're going to see an even bigger picture where the 7040U is really starting to pull ahead inside this very constrained 10 watt TDP slice. We are effectively having more CPU power inside of the same space. Now, here's the kicker. This part is mind blowing to me because when you look at it as just numbers, right? What the 7040U is doing. Now, you may be thinking, oh, the 7040U is using more power, but they're both at 10 watt. The reality is that the 7840U is almost aware of its voltage allowance, its voltage budget. And because it's it's keeping tabs on how much under budget it is, it is basically aware of how under budget it is. And then, you know, during four, quarter four, it boosts voltage to spend what it can, spend its budget within itself. Effectively, if we were to take all voltages from all eight CPU cores on both platforms and average them out, we see that the 7840U uses five ten thousandths of a volt more. Effectively, nothing. Like it's infinitesimally small in terms of how much more voltage it's using, but it's it's barely anything, which is really crazy to see. So effectively, what we're seeing here is that the 7840U is basically wheeling and dealing for voltage and clocks and then spending more when it needs those clocks. So we're getting the best of both worlds here. It's it's really impressive to see what's going on on the CPU side. But then when we take a look at the GPU side, something even more interesting happens here. First, let's take a look at the GPU voltage between both of these platforms. When we look at this graph, it should be very, very obvious that the 7840U and the Z1E are using the exact same voltage between both of these 10 watt slices in this particular test. However, when we take a look at effective GPU clocks, this paints an entirely different story. Effectively, what we're seeing here is the data from hardware info is telling us that inside of these spaces that the GPU on the 7840U is more effectively using those same that same voltage and those clocks inside that voltage better than the Z1E is. Effectively, the Z1E is wasting power in this particular spot. You should be able to clearly see, just looking at this one graph, that the GPU is clearly doing more in this one slice than the Z1E is. And then if we take a look at FPS graphed out, this is what the FPS look like, the 7840U versus the Z1E, and that matches up to the cap frame X data that I've already showed you. However, when we combine these graphs, like if we take a look at the effective GPU clocks and we kind of put the FPS graph on it together, this should paint a better story for you. If you just take a close look at the effective GPU clocks and how the FPS falls and rises on the 7840U versus how it falls and rises on the Z1E, it starts to paint a very apparent picture of what's going on here. The next part that we should be talking about are the memory clocks because the GPU is going to depend on being fed by those. What's interesting here is that on my 7840U, it can go up to 937 megahertz uh, effectively because it's faster RAM. However, because we're in this 10 watt slice, it is not going up to that clock. So it instead caps itself out at 800 megahertz like the Asus Ally does as well, which technically maxes out at that frequency. So let's kind of back up for a second, right? Let's let's try to encapsulate what we're looking at here. Effectively, the 7840U and the Z1E on the CPU and the GPU are more or less using the same amount of voltage for CPU and GPU inside of a 10 watt TDP slice. They're using the same amount of voltage, they're using the same amount of power. Great, it's just that the 7840U is doing it way better than the Z1E is. and why that's kind of good news to me is that it paints a picture that the 7840U is just handling that power much, much more efficiently. And as a result, we see far better performance in that same slice uh, when I do my benches. So there is a bit of hope for me that basically I am going to eventually have to redo all of the benches I already did. And I'm hopeful that we're going to see a, a considerable performance boost on the Z1E as soon as we get newer firmware and newer drivers for this, because with those two and in, in together, what we should effectively see is the Z1E doing the same thing that the 7840U is doing. Uh, the only reason that the Z1E wouldn't be doing what the 7840U is doing is this next bit that we have to talk about, which is the silicon lottery itself. The silicon lottery is essentially how chips 
because not all chips are the same. Even though they are, there's a binning process to see what types of voltage is required for what clock, there are conditions where when you're binning these chips, what happens is, is that you find out you have chips that are better than others. And when this happens, this is why like AMD would have a 7940HS versus a 7840U. Their 7940HS are a better bin chip. They are better chips. So they are the more expensive version because they are better. So you're paying, you're paying more for better silicon. And that's how binning has been worked forever. So the part that we want to talk about here is in the silicon lottery state that we might find ourselves in is that my 7840U might be a gold star winner, whereas my Asus RG Allies Z1E might not be. And what we're seeing here is my data set comparing these two and we really shouldn't be running away with ourselves thinking that this is how everything is going to be. So that's the kind of thing that I wanted to address in this video is that there is a reason why the 7840U is doing so much better than the Z1E is, especially at low wattage. It's just because on the CPU side, the how it's handling voltage is super intelligent. Uh, and on the GPU side, it's making better use of GPU clocks inside of the same voltage. So those two things are the knockout punch between everything on how we're getting so much better performance inside the same TDP slice. So uh, really impressive uh, what we're seeing on the 7840U. I'm very hopeful that we're actually going to be able to see this on the Z1E. That's pretty much it for this video, guys. Hopefully that was a little bit more helpful in understanding what was going on here. As always, guys, thank you for your time and thanks for watching.